sir, we're Pont Freed. Can I take your order, please? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gibbons Talks Boxing YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you have not done so already. Um, today, I've got a, a very special guest on the channel. Uh, this guy has been described by Mike Tyson as his very toughest opponent. Also, if you follow boxing during the 80s and 90s, this guy has fought a who's who of heavyweight boxing. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined by Jose Rebolta from Cuba originally, now living in Miami. Um, great to speak to you, sir. Yes, how are you doing? Great, great to be in your show, too. Great to be in your show. Great. I came from Cuba when I was four years old. And then at around 12, 13, about 12, 13 years old, I started boxing here in Miami, Florida. I started boxing in Miami, Florida, you know. But first, we lived in Washington, D.C. And then after Washington, D.C., after I turned nine years old, we came to Miami, Florida. And then at, at when I was 12 years old, I started boxing, started boxing here in Miami, Florida, is where I started boxing at, Miami, Florida. Were you naturally good at boxing? Did you take to it straight away? Excuse me? Did you take to the sport straight away? Were you, were you always very good at boxing? No, I played, I played football. I played football also in high school. I played football. And I was pretty good playing football in high school. And then I was saying, you know, um, I got into a little altercation with one of the coaches. But then what happened, they threw me off the team. <laughs> then two other teams, so then I went ahead and started boxing. And that's when I started, started boxing, you know. Well, I was really boxing, you know, but I, they told me, the coach told me, another coach told me, Jose, why don't you go ahead and just go back to boxing? So that's what I did. I went back to boxing. And, so, you know, I was 17 years old. I was 17, 17, 18 years old. Then, I, I, you know, I started buying pro. Pro. So how, how many amateur contests did you have? Well, as an amateur, I was 55 win, 8 loss, and one, 55 win, 8. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As an amateur, you know, as an amateur I was like, I was like, uh, I'm sorry, like, like, eight, like 65 and, and, six, and 6, something like that, as an amateur. And did you turn pro uh, purely for financial reasons? Because you, you'd had enough of the amateurs, you wanted to make some money? Yes, definitely. I wanted to make some money, you know, and I got really kind of tired of boxing as an amateur. So I turned pro in 1982. I turned pro. So did you did you sign a, a promotional contract with one of the big promoters, or did you have to try and work work your way up? Well, I really kind of way had to work work my way up. I worked my way up, way up you know. Uh, but you know, the one with Don King one time when when he signed with him, you know, but I didn't, you know. I was with this guy in Louis de who was uh, who was my manager. And and also and also um Mary Gaby. Mary Gaby was my first manager, boxing manager. You know, Mary Gaby. He passed away. You know So who were some of the, the guys around uh that you were training with and unboxing during the start of your career? Oh, in my, my side career, my first trainer was Bobby Allen and Eddie Ludlow when I first started. You know, I, I was like 13, 12, 13, 14. But when I was 15, 15 years old, I went to this guy named Dave Clark. Dave Clark, you know, and then he, you know, he passed away also. Dave Clark, so I was really, you know, he was, he was like really, to me, one of my, you know, best trainer, you know, good trainer and everything, you know. But Bobby Allen was a good trainer too, but but he little, you know, I'm sorry, Dave Clark was a real good trainer also. So um, who were some of the guys you fought when you were coming through the ranks before the Tyson fight? Oh, when I, I fought oh, James Bone Crusher Smith, which I fought him to a bad, they gave me a real bad decision against him. I fought 20 Tubbs. I thought Tony Tuggs gave me a real bad decision against him. And, uh, you know, and I fought Tim Witherspoon. They also gave me a bad decision against him, too. I fought, I fought like 12, 13 world champions, you know. Uh, I fought Bruce Seldon. I fought many fighters, you know, many fighters that gave me a bad decision against them. 
you know, because like I say, you know, my manager was really was not really that popular. So him not him not being that popular would happen, you know, you know, every time every time we had to go to the person's hometown, hometown or hometown or the person put the promoter was his manager, the, the my opponent's manager. But then any close decision would give be given to them. You know, that's what took place a lot of time. You know, so and therefore anything any, anything close, I lose. Like for example, like when I for uh not for the Tim Witherspoon, I beat him to get the decision in. First they caught it a draw, and then like like two or three men later, they said, ladies and gentlemen, the decision has been changed. The winner is Tim Witherspoon. I, and I couldn't believe that. And the same thing with Tim, same thing with uh, James Bone Crazy Smith. You know, and a lot of things, you know, even even when I fought when I fought the uh, uh Clisco, Clisco, you know, I fought Clisco, I had a fever. I had a fever when I had for Clay Skull. You know, and then they told me, I said, listen, man, I have, you know, I had a fever. And the doctor saw that I had a fever. So what they did was, they told me, Jose, listen, we'll give, we'll give you, they gave me extra money, extra, they gave me like 10 or 15 grand extra, for, you know, for me to go to fight Clay Skull. I fought Clay Skull with a fever. And then Clay, Clay Skull stopped me in the second round, you know. And this also, even even when I fought Razor Relic, now for reason whether I for I was scheduled to fight somebody else. So I was scheduled to fight somebody else, but then what took place was that what took place was they say, Jose, you're fighting Razor Relic. I said, What do you mean I'm fighting Razor Relic? Razor Relic is not scheduled for me to fight him. And, and then they say, Yeah, yeah, he, you know, he just came in. And then I fought Razor Relic in 17 hours notice, you know. I, I was not ready to fight Razor Relic. You know, in 17 hours, I fought Razor Relic. And why you know, one of the reasons he, you know, he stopped me so quick because I, I wasn't really practicing, practicing to fight him. And, and, and many other fights, I fought that way too, you know. I fought that way too, you know, like for example, you know, even actual, actual shots, you know, and many other fighters I fought, you know, when I was not really scheduled to fight them. I, I just went in and fought, you know, the reason I fought them because, you know, hey, because I fear no man. I fear no man because you know what, I fight them. You know, and, and that's what took place a lot of time in my fights. You know, but you know that that was not really being smart. That was not really being smart, you know, because I lost several fights that way. You know, but you know, being just being brave. Sometimes being brave, brave in boxing time is not good. Doesn't benefit you that much. During the early '80s, when you you first turned professional and and your your fights, you said you lost to Bone Crusher Smith and now Witherspoon. Um, how much was Don King an influence on heavyweight boxing then during that time, and did his influence affect the results of the fights? Well, Don King always had great influence in heavyweight fight, fighting. But what happened was that that Don King having great influence in heavyweight fighting. You know, he was now he was not my promoter. My promoter was at the time with Luzi Kubas, you know, and he, and he pretty much did whatever Don King said do. That's what he did. You know, and that's what took place there. You know, you know what took place there a lot of time. You know, whenever whenever Don King say do, that's what that's what more promoters do. You know, what they do, what they what Don King say. Would you have signed with Don King, or did Don King offer you a contract? Yeah, at one time, at one time, he spoke to me. He spoke to me about even 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 when when Tony Tug was scheduled to fight Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, you know, uh, Don King, Don King, what he did was, well, re- originally, when, when Buster Douglas was scheduled to fight Mike Tyson, when he was scheduled to fight Mike Tyson, right, Don King did not want Mike Tyson to fight with me, because me and Mike Tyson had, had already fought before. So Don King did not want Mike Tyson to fight with me, the rematch. So then if, what he did was, he chose Buster Douglas, because he, he underestimated Buster Douglas. So that what took place. He underestimated Buster Douglas, so he chose Buster Douglas to fight to fight uh, Tyson instead of me. Cause he thought I was gonna get Tyson a half fight. You know, it, it would have been a rematch, yeah. the first rematch. So he chose Buster Douglas. You know, I guess he chose the wrong man then. You know, <laughs> he chose the wrong man. So Buster Douglas. So when did you first become aware of Mike Tyson? We when the what? When did you first hear of Mike Tyson? When were you aware of his presence on the heavyweight scene? 
Yes, I, I was aware of his presence. Yes, I, I was aware, very aware of him. You know, I had seen him on TV. I forgot. I think he fought. I forgot. I, I think it was Marvin Frazier. I think it was. Oh no, I'm sorry. He fought Tim. He fought. Uh, um, oh my God. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the yeah, he, 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 did, he did fight Marvin Frazier at one point, didn't he, Mike? But, 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 but I think he fought Marvin Frazier uh, after he fought after he fought me. I think he fought Marvin Frazier or before. No, he fought Tillis. He fought James Quick Tillis before. He James Quick he fought James Quick Tillis before he fought me. You know, you know before he did. I saw yep. I saw a fight before him and with him and Tillis, and, and then you know I saw man, this guy here, he's not that bad. He, he played pretty good because Tillis went ten round with him. He went ten, ten, ten went ten round with with Mike Tyson. You know, so therefore I said, wow, you know. But but tis, tis a good punch, you know, he's a good boxer. Yeah, good boxing techniques. And I think as well, with Mike Tyson's fight with James Tillis, it was actually the knockdown that Mike scored in the third round, was it, or the fourth round that actually uh, salvaged the win for Mike? Because I think it probably would have been a draw if Mike Cutton had scored that knockdown. No, nah, no. Nah, and, uh, and Mike Tyson was winning pretty much every, every round. He was winning pretty much every round. He was like dominating the fight. See, before when he fought Tillis, and then he fought, and then he fought uh, uh, Tillis, and then he fought James. He fought, he fought one of the guys before me, right? Um, and what he was doing, like guys, what they were doing, you know, they were just trying to survive. Just trying to survive, you know, when they fought. Mike Tyson, you know, I was one of the, one of the guys really fought Tyson head on, you know, because you know we we went there for ten hard round, you know, because everybody else, everybody else was just trying to survive. That's it. So, what did you think when your manager or promoter offered you the fight with Mike Tyson? Oh, I say, you know, I said to him, I said, yeah, definitely, I would definitely take him because I had no fear in, in Mike Tyson. But then my trainer, my trainer was the only one to say, you know what, Jose, well, he, he didn't speak, he didn't tell me about it. He told my manager, he said, you know what, I don't believe Jose, Jose Barta is ready for Tyson yet. I think we should give away for at least a year, a year, year, like a year, year and a half. You know, he was the only one that really felt that way, you know, but. You know, I kind of, you know, like I say, you know, at the results, you know, I kind of agree with him, you know. But, hey, that's what, that's what, that's what life about, chances. So uh, how long did you have to get ready to fight Mike Tyson? How, how much notice? No, really, I really had uh, like a month. I had a month, a month to get ready for a month. And, yeah. uh, and what were your tactics going into the fight? No, we were just present. Me, and my trainer, all we were doing is pivoting, pivoting. Make sure when every time I hit him, the punches hurt him. Pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. Everything, the uppercut pivot, right uppercut pivoting, left hook pivot. Everything was everything. Everything consists of a pivot. You know that's why. I, but then my fight after the fight, you know, I said, man, I told my trainer, wow, you know, he didn't seem hurt. He didn't seem like he was hurt or anything like that when I hit him, right? And then my trainer Dave Clark, Dave Clark said, you see, he, I saw, I saw when he was hitting him. You see, you see, he, he was in PC pain. And then after the fight, after years later when Tyler retired, you know, when he retired, then he mentioned, he mentioned then that. Uh, he was in a lot of pain after my fight. He couldn't even go out on a date after my <laughs> fight. You know, he made a lot of things after my fight. You know, you know what? You know, he said he, like I say, he couldn't even go out on a date. A beautiful young lady he was with, waiting for him. And he couldn't even go out on a date. You know, a lot of things. You know, that took place after my fight with Mike Tyson. And um, you were down a couple of times in that fight. I mean, how how hard did? Tyson hit compared to some of the other heavyweights you'd fought? Because you, you'd already fought at a very high level before that fight. No, yeah, that's true. No, no, Tyson is a real good puncher. He punched hard. But I just think the hardest puncher for me was James Bond, Christian Smith. He's the hardest puncher I ever fought, you know. But, but, but Tyson, but, but you cannot deny Tyson. Tyson is a real hard puncher also. He punches real hard. And Mike was very short for a heavyweight, only only five five ten five eleven. Um, but yeah, but he, yeah, but you, but you really know what he has done in the heavyweight division. You really can't say he's short now. 
he's a very he's a very easy very height now he's a very height <laughs> um looking back on your fight with Mike Tyson do you wish you'd done anything different yes 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 i wish i wish yes i wish you know i wish i really okay there was a time when i was boxing him i think it was the seventh round and i was like applying pressure on him but i was would applying pressure different different way in a different way you know i wish i wish i had done more uppercuts and more uppercuts more left hook you know i wish really i had mixed it up more with him because what took place also when in 1996 you know we fought in 1986 but then what took place in 1996, we spar, when we spar, it was a different thing. There was a, in, we fought in 1996, you know, we went three rounds, we did four rounds sparring, and I did real good with him in sparring. I did real, real good with him in sparring. You know, they, we were going at it. You know, a lot of people were saying, other sparring partners would say, man, you know, Jose, <laughs> man, you did real good, you did real good, you know. A lot of sparring partners, you know, they were, they were there also, they said to me that I did real good, you know. You know, and they have my confidence also. You know, I was there. I was there for a whole month when I sparred my Tyson. I was there for a whole month, and we only sparred one time. You know, because after that, after the first sparring session we had, you know, he didn't want his. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna say him, but you know, this trainer, his trainer, his trainer kept saying, you know, oh no, not you, not him, not him, not him. You know, we didn't spar. It's just like, for example, this exhibition situation, you know, they say they chose, they chose Roy Jones, but I, I thought I was going to be selected because even, even when me and him boxed the first time in 1986, you had millions of people who wanted to see a rematch between me and Mike Tyson. Like, like over 60, 70 million people wanted to see that rematch with me and Mike Tyson. But what took place was, you know, they chose Roy Jones. I don't know. I don't know. Not less. Not less. Not, not less. The eighty million people who who were living back then died. You know, that's the way I see it. Because everybody, when they see remake between me, me and Mike Tyson, you know, and I, and I thought the exhibition would have been a great thing for me you know, to do. The right, the right now, you know, right now there's talks about me fighting, possibly fighting uh, uh, Deontay Wilder. You know, the, you know, we talk, we talking about it, see what happens. You know, I, I won't mind fighting Deontay Wilder. Do you, do you think you uh, fight Wilder in an exhibition or in a proper contest? Uh, repeat the game, sorry. Would you want to fight Wilder in an exhibition or in a uh, a proper boxing match? Me personally, uh, it really doesn't matter. But I, I would prefer a proper a proper boxing match. Do, do you think that you, you could uh, still compete with the heavyweights of today? Of course, of course, of course, of course. Like I say, you know, mainly, mainly, you know, one thing that you know, right now I really feel, because I really believe, like, for example, a lot of people, like young guys, you know, today, you know, they be, they be doing, like, you know, drinking, out of the, drinking alcohol, Doing drugs and everything. Like I say, I, I never drunk a, never drunk a liquor, never did beer, never drunk a, never smoke or did or did weed or anything like that, right? So I feel to where I really feel good. I really feel that, like I'm 17 years old. My body really feel good, you know. You know, like you guys say, for example, like if I was to fight Wilder right now, you would see the difference, you know. You would see the difference. And I really feel good. You know, what 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 did you think of Wilder's rematch with Tyson Fury? Well, I think I think it would be it would be it would be a good good fight. Really, really well. I think Wilder Wilder would probably beat him, but mainly well, the main thing is that Will um, Tyson Fury is a pretty good boxer. He's a pretty good boxer, and Wilder, I, I think he will outpoint he will outpoint Wilder. But, Wilder really, he, he doesn't really has no basics in boxing. That's why, that's why right now I'm encouraging, I'm again trying to encourage myself to fight Wilder right now, <laughs> you know, because, because really he doesn't really, he really does not have too much technique for boxing. I think, I think Fury does have more boxing technique than Wilder. And what, what did you think about uh, Mark Breland throwing in the towel to end? Uh, his second fight with Tyson Fury. Well, you know what? You know, let me tell you. You know, I forgot the young man's name that I, I had box. I had box here. You know, oh, I forgot his name. We forgot his name. But 
the same thing happened to me. Every the while the people are saying, oh, Jose, you just talking, you just talking. But listen, there was a situation to where this trainer, this guy that I knew for a while, right? Okay, what happened was he said to me, Jose, here, this medication, this vitamin will help you a great deal. It will help you will make it be strong. And then he said, here, take it. I took the I took the vitamin, like within two, three hours for the fight. I took the vitamin. And then, you know, I didn't know. I said, what kind of, I said to him, I asked him, what kind of vitamin is this? He said, no, it's good for you. Take it, take it, take it. And then when I, I took the vitamin, to the vitamin, what took place was, you know, within, within the second round, I was so feeling so weak. I was feeling so weak. I, I didn't have no power. I forgot who the, I forgot who the fire was, but I didn't have no power. The second round, I got stopped in the second round. So that's what I'm saying. You know, these things, these things do happen in boxing. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not behind Wilder saying that he did. You know, the event that, that, that um, what his name is, the, 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 his trainer did it. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, it, it could have happened. It could have happened. I'm not saying he did it, you know, but ain't, like I say, it just, it, it's a part of life. It's like part of life. All things are possible. All things are possible. You know, it, 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 you know, can't underestimate nobody. All things are possible. He probably did it. And he probably had a good chance. He good chance he didn't. But he a good chance. The possibility he could have done it. Do you think uh, Mark Breland did the right thing by throwing the towel in? Was that the right decision? It, 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 well, I really, I really, I really, I really, I really, I really didn't start a fight one time, really. You know, but I mean, like I say, he, my brain is, is is a good fighter. You know, and he's been to he been to some hard fight. So I guess it, I would say I would say probably it was a good good decision. I would say a decision. I, I think he he been a good fight. He been tough. He been some tough fight. He, he know was good. You know, you know, but I, I don't remember, I don't remember the fight that 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 good. You know, so I, you know, so I, you had to go with, with brilliant decision. You know, I don't know. He 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 know where the fire was. He know where the fire was going through in the corner. So I don't know. He know where the fire was going through. But um, but like but like I say, like like, like Wilder said, he, he wasn't feeling too good. He was not feeling too good, and that means a lot. And you know, what do you, you know? think of Anthony Joshua as, as a as a fighter? Anthony Joshua, he was he, he's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. You know, I think he's good for that. Well, I think in, in him fighting Fury, it, it'll be a be pretty good fight. In fact, I pretty think a fight that could probably go either way. He go either way. It, I think it is even, it's an even fight. Back in your day, uh, during the 80s and 90s and prior to that, American heavyweights dominated world boxing, whereas now, really, apart from... John T. Wilder, America hasn't really got many good heavyweights at the moment. Why, why do you think that is? Oh, well, why they have good heavyweights? I don't know, guys. I guess, uh, you know, America, you know, I guess they train the fight pretty good here, train the fight pretty good here, you know. But to me, when the good place out there, good heavyweight is to Cuba, where I'm from. Cuba, Cuba has good everywhere, you know, they just, you know, like, because of communism, you know, communists, you know, they can't come here. But, but Cuba does have good, but good everywhere. They, my, yeah, my brother, my brother fought Tefillo Stevens three times, you know, and they went at it three times. You know, and you had Milian, Angel Milian, you know, and you had Tefillo Stevenson. Those, those, those were great, those were three great heavyweights, you know. Of course, a fight that was talked about uh, in the seventies, was uh, Stevenson and Muhammad Ali? There was talk of bringing Stevenson over for that fight, or to try and make some sort of a uh, matchup. I know Stevenson was an amateur, but ha- how do you think that would have gone? Ooh, it, it would have been, been, been a good fight. It would been a good fight. But I believe, I believe Muhammad Ali would have taken him. Okay. Muhammad Ali would have taken him. <laughs> and yeah, that, the experience, the experience that Muhammad Ali had. He would have made, he would have been making Stevenson throwing all these punches, you know. But Ali Ali is good. Ali, I love Ali. I spar Ali, <laughs> spar Ali in 1984. I spar well, Ali. And did you come across Ali much in uh, 
in the late 70s and the early 80s? No, I, no, the Aspara. No, no, sorry, did, did, did you meet him? Did you um, see, see him at different boxing events? Yes, I'm, yes, I'm very, very, you know, a lot of, a lot of boxing events, um, yes, yes. But me and Spar in 1984, 84 we Spar. You know, when, when Angel Dundee, Angel Dundee was in the gym, saying, about you want Spar? You want Spar? I say, <laughs> I say, I say, Spar who? He said, Roberto, do you want to spar? I said, who? And then, then all of a sudden, Ali come running from behind the wall. He come running from behind the wall, and he was hands up, and I said, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> and I was really surprised, you know, that that's, that's who he was saying for me to spar with. <laughs> and and what, was it, what was it like, that experience of sparring with Muhammad Ali? Oh, it was great experience, great experience. You know, at one time, like I believe in the second, second, third round, second, third round, uh, I did a shuffle on him and I almost <laughs> fell. You know, and everybody, everybody started laughing. Everybody started laughing at me. You know, <laughs> I felt kind of bad. I was like twelve. I was like twenty. I was like twenty-one years old. Twenty-one, twenty, uh, twenty-one years old. I was twenty-one years old. And I sparred with him. So uh, apart from the Mike Tyson fight, which a lot of people remember you for, what were your other big fights you were involved in after that uh, period? Oh, after, after him, I fought, like I fought Larry Holmes, you know, I fought Larry Holmes. You know, a lot of people, two judges came to my training and said, Jose, they said, you know what, if, if Larry Holmes had not dropped Jose in the second round, we would have given him the, the decision. And then I fought Tim Witherspoon. Tim Witherspoon, I fought him the same thing, you know, like a real bad fight decision, you know. And then I fought, you know, I fought Tony Tubbs, you know, beat him, you know. You know, you know, you know Tony Tubbs is a three round, it was a three round fight in the terminal. It was a good fight, a good fight, you know. I, I, fought, I fought many, many other fights, you know, that I fought back then. You know, like, you know, Razor Rudder, you know, a fight to where they really, they really, Set me up for that fight. They set me up for that fight. You know, for Razor Rudder, you know, with a 17 hour notice. You know, I was I was trained for a whole month, month to train somebody to fight somebody else. And then all of a sudden, 17 hours before the fight, they say, Jose, you're gonna fight Razor Rudder. So what do you mean I'm fighting Razor Rudder? You know, and that what took place there. You know, and that happened that happened to me a couple of times, even with Klitschko. Klitschko. You know, when I for Klitschko, the same thing. You know, they told me, I said, I have a fever, you know. And the doctor saw that I had a fever, but they told me, listen, okay, we, we'll let you, okay, okay, we, we'll give you some extra money. And they gave me extra money for that fight, you know, to fight Klitschko. And I said, okay, yeah, no problem. And that's why I was stopped in the second round, you know. And, you know, a, a lot of things happened to me, in, you know, in several fights, you know, to where you know, that, that, that was not really fair you know, in box, for boxing. It seems that that you still have some fight left in you because you're talking well, I, about boxing again. Um, you said you'd like to fight Mike Tyson in an exhibition again. Um, how would an exhibition between yourself and Mike Tyson go? Oh, like I say, this time I fight Tyson, it, it, it was go very, go very well on, in, in, on, my, on my way, in my way. My way, go very well my way. You know what I'm saying? Because I, like I say, you know, if I go, if I go this time, it's gonna be a slug match. It's gonna be a slug match. It's gonna be, it's gonna be worse than it was the first time. <laughs> so, so if he's this time, this time, if he's, if he was in pain the first time, this time, wow, my God, I don't want to talk. I don't even want to talk about how many pains he's gonna have. He might, he, he's not gonna make it out of the ring. He won't make it out of the ring this time. He will not make it. So what did you think of Mike's exhibition with Roy Jones? Well, I, like I say, you know, he, he, he was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was a pretty good exhibition, you know. But like I say, you know, when people want to see exhibition, you know, especially paying that much money, you know, they, they want to see people get hit. You know what I'm saying? Because Roy Jones was pretty much doing with, like, you know, I stay away from you for a couple of rounds, and I say, you know. But Roy Jones is a good fighter. I mean, he's a good fighter. He was a good champion, you know. But like I say, you know, but it, it was a good fight, but... You know, it should have been it should have been it should have been more contact, you know, more hand contact between the both of them. You know, that's what I feel about. If they're gonna go what six round, it should have been more hand contact. 
but, 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 but they, they both did good. They both did good. Both did good. So have you or any of your people spoke, spoke to Mike's uh, people to try and get this exhibition on? Well, right now, the only place contact I got right now is, um, is uh, Facebook and, and Instagram. There's no way I get in touch with them. Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. Because I would love to get in contact with Mike Tyson and do an exhibition, you know. You know, I'd love to. And has there been any response from Mike or his people? Repeating, I'm sorry. Has there been any response from Mike Tyson or his team in regards uh, boxing you again? No, 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 no response, no response. Because, like I said, like I said earlier, you know, like I said earlier, even Don King, Don King did not want me to fight Tyson in the rematch. You know, when he fought Buster Douglas, that's why he chose Buster Douglas. You know, instead of me. He chose Buster Douglas instead of me. Because they knew, they knew the good chance that I would have beaten Tyson. And that, that's the way I feel about it. You know, going out for Tyson, the first time, you know, hey, okay, he beat me, he beat me, okay, he beat me, you know. But I learned, I learned so much from that first, for that fight with Tyson, that the second time would have been me. Matter of fact, I show, I show, I show things that different when we spar. We spar in 1996. I show different things, you know. You know, show different things with Tyson. We spar. So, uh, go ahead. So yeah, yeah. Uh, apart from Tyson and John De Wilder, are there any other heavyweights you'd be interested in boxing? If if there's any interest. Well, right now uh, he's busy. He just right now him and, and Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis. I won't mind finding Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis. Uh, uh, Lennox Lewis. Or even or even a rematch with Klitschko. A rematch with Klitschko. I won't mind. I won't mind having. You know, I would, you know, I would like to love to have Crisco because he, 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 knew, he knew, I believe he knew, he knew I had a fever. He knew I had a fever. You know, I want my, I want, I want, I want my friend Crisco because Crisco knew I had a fever when I fought him the first time. Jose, you, know. you, you, you've boxed at a really high level at the, you know, a good amateur. You've boxed world class fighters. You've boxed Mike Tyson, one of the greatest boxers of all time. Um, how, why have you still got so much fight left in you? Mo yeah, most, yeah. most people would be happy to be retired now and relax, but you, you still have a lot of fight left in you. Yes, yeah, yeah I'm not saying a, a, a lot, a lot but, but I have enough, enough to still be proud, proud of boxing. I have enough to still be proud of boxing. Like I say, you know, you know, it makes it means so much, you know, when you when you're growing up, when you're growing up, you know, because I've I've I have had so many people ask me, Jose, man, come on, let's go sons, friends of mine, you know, like 19, 20 years old, Jose, let's go out and let's go out and get high. And I say to them, no, I don't do that. Jose, let's go out and smoke some weed. I even had some young ladies, young ladies in high school who said to me, Jose, I will you know, I will give you sex. I will give you sex if you smoke some weed with me. I say, no, baby, I don't do that. I don't do that. You know, like I say, you know, because that, 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 that man want that weed stuff, you know, it's so easy, it's so easy to get in touch, get involved with that, you know, but it's not good for you. You know, because to me, it doesn't make sense, you know, here you are, you are a human being, and you put smoke into your system. It doesn't make sense at all. Here you are, you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all, you know, putting smoke into your system and putting alcohol, alcohol, and alcohol is not good for you, you know, you put this into your system. And then later on, a couple years later, you, then you, then you just say, oh man, my, my, my kidney hurt, my liver hurt, you know, you start complaining about things that hurt, you know, because what you did late, what you did earlier on, and that's what it took place, you know, that's why I say, you know, I see a lot of young, Young men today were still doing, you know, I, you know, I, I think something wrong with them, you know, you know. So I don't know. That's really, really what I think about it. So that's why I say, you know, I, I feel, I feel great. I really feel in great, great shape, you know. I, I go out there right now and run three, four, five miles like nothing, you know. I go run five miles like nothing. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I've been, I've been running for less, running for three and a half miles, four miles for the last couple of days. I've been doing that, you know. So, so, so you, you boxed Mike Tyson and you sparred Muhammad Ali. Who do you think yeah, when if, if they had boxed each other both at their in their primes? Well, I would have to say 
I was here to prime. It, it would have been a hard fight. I honestly, yeah, people have asked me that before, and I believe that it would have been a hard fight. It is a fight that, you know, it depends how Mike Tyson came into the fight and how Ali came into the fight, because it would have been a hard fight. It, it's a fight, honestly, the way, I'm not saying because I fought, and I'm not saying it because I boxed Mike Tyson, but I think it would have been a hard fight. You know, because you have to understand that Joe Frazier had a similar style than than, Muhammad, than, um, than uh, Mike Tyson. And I think Mike Tyson was a little stronger than, than Joe Frazier, and his head, his head movement was a little quicker than Joe Frazier, too. That's my opinion. That's my opinion, you know. You know like I said, and look what, look, what he did, look what he did to Joe Frazier's son. He started him in, what, in about 15, 20 seconds. 20 seconds knocked him out. 20 yep. seconds. You know, you know, so there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to do with it. Did you know after your fight with Mike Tyson that Mike was going to go on to be world champion and uh, unify the world heavyweight title and become a a global icon? Well, I knew, I knew he had a great chance to world champion. The one thing is that, I, like I say, you know, I always, I will keep my... You know, myself, you know, I believe it on myself because I was really surprised to a degree that people don't, don't, don't understand. But I was really surprised he beat me, honestly, you know, but like I said, but I knew, I knew, well, I kind of knew that he become, he had, he had a talent to become world champion, you know, because I used to spar with Trevor Burbick all the time. I used to spar with Trevor Burbick. And I thought when Trevor Burbick uh, for for Tyson, I thought it was, I thought that Tyson may have a, may have a little edge because Tyson was quicker, he was strong, he was strong. You know, I think he probably, probably had a little edge um, on um, um, Trevor Burbick. You know, we, were you surprised the the way Mike Tyson beat Trevor Burbick? Yes, yes, I was surprised. I was surprised because I expected I expected for it to go at least by at least at least seven or eight rounds at least. You know, but it went two, two round, two or three round went. Two rounds, yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I was, I was surprised. Yes. And uh, good, good. How, how often do you watch back your fight with Mike Tyson? Oh, honestly, honestly, I, I watch. You know, I watch parts okay, occasionally. You know, occasionally I watch. You know, but but it's all right. You know, sometimes I, I watch it. I watch it, and I say, man, I can't believe. You know. If I had only done this, if I had only done that, this or that, you know, it would have been a much better fight. So like I say, you know, I believe, and that's what that's when we, me and him, sparred again, you know, me and him sparred again, you know, it was like a little different, you know. I, I thought I, had a little bit, I did a lot, a lot better than I did in the fight when we sparred because I, I, learned, I learned things things from watching our videos, video of our fight, you know. Like I, like I say, you know, that's, you know, that's what I say, you know, I would love to, I would love to do an uh, exhibition with Mike Tyson or with Wilder. I love to get, I really love to get a fight with Wilder. To tell you the truth, really, a fight. With him. <laughs> so, so how 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 would you beat Deontay Wilder? T- tell us. Well, I can't tell you. That. I can't tell you my secret. <laughs> you, my secret. <laughs> you, you know, uh, uh, Tyson Fury. He had, he at first in the beginning, he had kind of a similar plan since kind of a similar plan. But then I saw the, then as the fight went on, I saw that the, his plan was, it was not really the way the plan I have to be wilder. Not even, I, I, you know, like I say, you know, but first, Fury's champion. But first, let me be wilder first, and then they can talk about, I can talk more about fighting Fury. You know? <laughs> Okay. I, I, I gotta do the right thing. I can't go ahead. I can't go ahead and just fight. Oh, I want to fight Fury. You no, know, Fury is the world champion. You know. You know. I understand. I gotta do something first. So I feel. I feel to it. Probably be Wilder, but then I go ahead and jump and fight Fury. Then. And and and, and like I said, when I in the, when I made an interview, I made, I made a little video. I said, Dante Wilder, don't do, please do not be deceived by my gray hair. Because <laughs> I had gray hair when I'm fourth grade. Fourth grade, I had, I had some gray hair. Not, not, as much, not as much as I have now, but I did have gray hair when I was in fourth grade. <laughs> okay. Um, 
All my brothers and sisters, all my siblings have gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jose, um, thank you for your time uh, today. Well, it's, it's, this, it's uh, this evening in the UK. I think it's the afternoon on the, uh, the East Coast in America with yourself. Um, before we wrap up the interview, um, if Mike Tyson happens to look at this interview, have you got a message for him to encourage him to get the exhibition on? Yes, Mike Tyson, let's do this exhibition. You, let's do the exhibition, Mike, Mike Tyson. Come on, you know, give me, give me a chance. You know, we, many people wanted to see our fight back in the 80s. So give me a fight, give me a fighting chance again. Let's do an exhibition, Mike Tyson. Okay, take care. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. It's uh, great to speak to you and I um, hope you have a, a great day and I hope, um, well, I hope you get the fights you want to get. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Cheers. Hello, so we're Pontefreed. Can I take your order, please?